Today we're going to look at how to access and navigate the Windows system tray using a keyboard. The system tray in Windows is the bottom right area of the screen. It shows you apps that are running in the background, certain system settings, and the time and date. Before we get started, we're going to turn on the Windows magnifier using Windows Plus. If you want to learn more about Windows magnifier, you can see one of my previous videos. I'll put a link in the description below this video. I'm going to hold the Windows key and tap the plus. We've got our magnifier up and running. I'm also going to turn on NVDA with Control Alt N. If you'd like to learn more about the NVDA screen reader, you can see one of my previous videos. I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'm going to hold the Control and Alt key on the keyboard, tap the letter N. Taskbar. Now that we have NVDA and Windows Magnifier turned on, there's two ways we can access the system tray using the keyboard. I'm going to start by making sure that I'm on the desktop. To do that, I'm going to hold down the Windows key and tap the letter D as in desktop. D Folder view list. Recycle bin 1 of 14. So that puts our focus on the desktop. Our first icon that we're focused on is the recycle bin. Now to move through the various areas of the Windows interface, we can use the tab key. Tab always moves you from one area to the next. So while on the desktop, if I press the tab key, Start button. Takes me down to the Start button. If I press Tab again, Type here to Search button. It puts me into the Search Edit box. I'm going to Tab again. Talk to Cortana button. There's my Cortana button. Tab again. Task View button. My Task View button. Tab again. Running Applications Toolbar. Microsoft Edge button. This is my taskbar showing the current running applications and also a few shortcuts for popular applications. I'm going to tab one more time. Notification Chevron button. We've reached the system tray. At this point, we can use the left or right arrows to navigate through these icons. I'm going to start by tapping the right arrow. User promoted notification area toolbar. OBS Studio is using your microphone button. There's a notification saying that my microphone is currently being used. Right arrow again. Not connected connections are available button. That's my internet connection icon. We'll be looking at how to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot in just a moment. I'm going to right arrow again. Speakers, 40% button. There's my speakers or my system volume button. We'll be looking at how to change the system volume in just a few minutes. I'm going to right arrow again. System clock, 1.40 p.m., 11 slash 9 slash 2020 button. There's my system clock and the date, telling me what time and date it is. I'm going to right arrow again. Action Center, no new notifications button. There's my Action Center. I'm going to right arrow one more time. Notification Chevron button. So we've come back around to the beginning. When you're navigating this area using the left and right arrows, once you get to the last item, it'll wrap back around to the beginning. It goes in a cycle. I can go through that cycle in the opposite direction as well if I use the left arrow. Action Center. System clock, user promote, not connected, OBS to notification chevron button. This notification chevron, this little upward pointing arrow, is hiding a few other icons that should be down here in the system tray. I'm going to activate this button using the Enter key. So we have a few more icons that show up. We have our USB devices where we can safely remove USB hardware like flash drives. We have our Windows Update notifications. The NVDA icon is down here as well as a few other apps that are running in the background. To move through these, now that this extra area is opened up, we can use that same right and left arrow. Overflow notification area toolbar. NVDA button. OBS Studio button. OneDrive not signed in button. Intel registered rapid storage technology button. Windows security actions recommended. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. Action center. System clock. User promote, not connected, OBS, notification, overflow note, OBS to OneDrive not signed in button. If I use the right arrow, it's going to take me in the opposite direction, but again, it's going to go in a circle. OBS, NVD, notify, user, not, speaker, system, action, notify, window, Intel, OneDrive, OBS, NVDA button. To close this area, I can hit the escape key. Notification Chevron button. And now those extra icons are hidden again. My preference on the computer is to have all of the icons that are in the system tray visible at all times. Some people may prefer to have the extra icons hidden beneath the chevron. I personally prefer to be able to see all the icons in the system tray. 
So before we go any further, I'm going to make a change to where we can see all of these system tray icons. To do that, I'm going to open the Start menu by pressing the Windows key. Start window. Search window. Search box edit blank. And I'm going to type the word taskbar. T A Taskbar settings, system settings, press right to switch preview one of three. I heard it say taskbar settings, system settings. I'm going to pan up to see what we have at the top of our list. There it is, system settings, taskbar settings. I'm going to press enter. Settings. Settings window. Search box. Find a setting edit blank. So we're going to be looking for select which icons appear on the taskbar. And from here, I'm going to start using the tab key to move through these options one at a time. List. Background not selected one of seven. Lock the taskbar toggle button pressed. Automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode toggle button not pressed. Automatically hide the taskbar in tablet mode toggle button not pressed. Use small taskbar buttons toggle button not pressed. Use peek to preview the desktop when you move your mouse to the show desktop button at the end of the taskbar toggle button not pressed. Replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell in the menu when I right click the start button or press Windows key plus X toggle button pressed. Show badges on taskbar buttons toggle button pressed. Taskbar location on screen combo box bottom collapsed. Combine taskbar buttons combo box always, hide labels collapsed. How do I customize taskbars? Notification area grouping. Select which icons appear on the taskbar link. So I found select which icons appear on the taskbar. I'm going to press the enter key. Select which icons appear on the taskbar. Home button. I'm going to tab one time to the first option. Always show all icons in the notification area toggle button not pressed. I'm going to activate this button using the space bar to turn it on. Space. Pressed. Now all of my icons should be showing in the notification area. At this point, we can close the settings using Alt F4. I'm going to hold the Alt key and tap F4. Desktop list. Recycle bin 1 of 14. The first method we used to access the system tray was putting ourselves onto the desktop using Windows D and then using the tab key to move from one area to the next until we found the system tray. Another way we can do this is just like we use Windows D to go to our desktop, we can use Windows B, as in Bravo, to get down to our system tray. So I'm going to hold the Windows key and tap the letter B. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. You'll notice now that instead of those extra icons being hidden behind the chevron, they're all listed in a row here. So I don't have to worry about opening that menu to see the rest of my icons. They're already here. Again, we can use the right or left arrow to navigate through this list. Windows security actions recommended. Intel registered rapid storage technology button. OneDrive not signed in button. OBS Studio button. NVDA button. OBS Studio is using your microphone button. Not connected connections are available button. Speakers. 40% button. System clock. 1.48 p.m. Action center. No new notif. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. And again, it goes in a cycle. If you continue using the right arrow, it'll eventually wrap back around to the first item. So let's look at how to change the system volume. Now that I'm in the system tray, I'm going to use the right arrow until I find speakers. It may also say headphones, depending on your computer. Windows Secure, Intel Regis, OneDrive Not, OBS Studio, NVDA, OBS Studio, Not Connected, co Speakers, 40% button. It tells me the speakers are currently set to 40%. I'm going to press the Enter key to open my volume settings. Volume control window. Volume slider 40. We have a volume slider. It goes from 0 to 100. We can use the left or right arrows to adjust the volume to our liking. I'm going to nudge it up just a bit. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 46. All right, and when I'm done, I can press the Escape key to close the volume control. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. And we're right back to the first icon in our system tray. To lower the volume, we can do the same thing. Once you're in the system tray, we can use the right arrow to find speakers or headphones. Windows, Intel, OneDrive, OBS, Studio, NVDA, OBS, Not Connect, Speakers, 46% button. Press Enter to open the volume settings. 
Volume control window. Volume slider 46. I'm gonna bring it back down to 40 by using the left arrow. 40, 40, 40, 40, 41, 40. That's good. I'm gonna hit the escape key to close the volume. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. Another setting you'll find down here in the system tray is the internet connection. If you're using a wired ethernet connection for your internet, you won't need to do anything down here in the system tray. But if you're using Wi-Fi, one way you can connect to a hotspot is through this button on the system tray. I'm going to right arrow until I find not connected. Connections are available. Windows, Intel Reg, OneDrive, OBS, NVDA, OBS, not connected connections are available button. There's my internet connection. I'm going to press enter to open my options. Network connections window. Airplane mode toggle button not pressed. The first place it put me is on the airplane toggle button. I don't want to turn on airplane mode right now. I'm going to press tab to move to my list of Wi-Fi networks. List. 6,925 secured. Secured. Signal 4 out of 4 bars not selected 1 of 11. It reads the first item in the list and tells me there are 11 networks in the list. I'm going to down arrow until I find the network I want to connect to. LH Corp secured. Secured. Signal 4 out of 4 bars not selected 2 of 11. LH Guest secured. Secured. Signal 4 out of 4 bars not selected 3 of 11. That's the one I want. I'm going to press enter on that one. Selected. Connect automatically checkbox checked. Once you pressed enter on one of the networks in the list, it's going to present a checkbox that will allow you to connect automatically to this network from now on. Mine is currently checked. If I wanted to uncheck it, I could tap the space bar. Space. Not checked. But we're going to leave it checked, so I'm going to space one more time. Space. Checked. Now that it's checked, we can move to the next control using the tab key. Connect button. There's my connect button. I'm going to use the space bar to activate that button. Space. Button. Checking network requirements. Enter the network security key edit protected blank. At this point, it's going to ask you for the network password or security key. I'm going to type that in now. Star. 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 You'll notice that the password is not showing as I'm typing it. That's a privacy measure to keep people from hearing or seeing your password as you type it in. Now that we've got the Wi-Fi password typed in, I'm going to tab to the next button. Next button. And tap the space bar. Do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by other PCs and devices on this network? We recommend allowing this on your home and work networks, but not public ones. Yes button. If this is a work or home network, go ahead and press the space bar to activate the yes button. If you're using a public Wi-Fi hotspot, such as at a coffee shop or a restaurant or hotel, you'll want to answer no. To do that, you would press the tab key to move to the no button, and then press the space bar. This is a work network, so I am going to answer yes to this. We're already there on the yes button, so I'm going to tap the space bar. Space. Verifying and connecting. Cancel button. LH guest connected. Secured. Secured. Signal 4 out of 4 bars 1 of 15. Once it checks the password and connects you to the network, we can press the escape key because we are done connecting to the Wi-Fi network. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. If I go back to the spot where that icon was, the not connected connections are available icon, it's now going to look and sound a bit different. Windows, Intel, Red, OneDrive, OBS, NV, OBS, LH guest internet access button. Now it tells me the name of the network that I'm on, and it tells me that I have internet access. For the volume and the Wi-Fi settings, I've been using the Enter key to open the options associated with those icons. But if you need different options or more in-depth options, you can also use the Application key to open the Context menu. If you don't have an Application key on your keyboard, as is the case with many laptops, you can also use Shift F10 to open the Context menu. This is similar to using the right click on the mouse to open the context menu. If I do that with the volume control, speakers, 40% button. If I pressed enter here, it would bring up the volume left right slider. But if I press the application key, we get more options. Context menu. We have a context menu that opens up. 
context menu means that the menu is going to change depending on the context in which you open it. This time we were on the volume control, so the context menu is going to have options related to the volume and sound on the computer. Once the context menu opens up, we can use the up or down arrow to navigate through this list. Open sound settings E. Open volume mixer M. Spatial sound, off, submenu. Sounds S. Troubleshoot sound problems T. Open sound settings E. Again, those go in a cycle as I continue to use the down arrow. Once I pass the last item, it's going to come back up to the top. There's nothing here that I need to change right now, so I'm going to press the escape key to close this context menu. Unknown. I heard it say unknown. We may not be focused on the system tray anymore, so I'm going to make sure we are using Windows B. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. Let's take a look at the context menu for the Wi-Fi and Internet settings. Windows Security Act, Intel, OneDrive, OBS, NV, OBLH Guest Internet Access button. Again, last time I pressed the Enter key and it brought up a list of the Wi-Fi networks we could connect to. If I press the Application key, though, Context Menu, we have another Context Menu with a few more options. Troubleshoot Problems T. Open Network and Internet Settings O. Again, I'm just using the down arrow to navigate through these options. Troubleshoot problems T. And just like before, they go in a cycle. To close this context menu, I'm going to press the escape key. Network fly out. I'm going to put my focus back into the system tray. User promoted notification area toolbar. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. Now that we've looked at the volume and the Wi-Fi settings, let's also take a look at the clock settings. I'm going to right arrow until I find the time and date. Windows Secure, Intel, OneDrive, OBS, NVD, OBS, LH, Speakers, System Clock, 2.04 p.m., 11-9-2020 button. So it tells me the time and date. If I press Enter, Date and Time Information Window, Monday, November 9, 2020 link. It brings up a mini calendar that we can browse through. To do that, we can use the Tab key. Calendar. November 2020 button. I'm going to tab again. Previous button. That would take me to the previous month. Next button. Next month. Nine data items selected November 2020 row 2 MO column 2. We're now on the November 9th. That's the current date as of this video. Once I'm in this area, I can use the arrow keys to navigate through this calendar. If I use the right arrow, it's going to take me to the next day. 10 data item November 2020 row 2 2 column 3. 11 data item November 2020 row 2 we column 4. 12 data item November 2020 row 2 th column 5. So that's the 12th. By down arrow it's going to go one week ahead. So to the 19th. 19 data item November 2020 row 3 th column 5. I'm going to tab to go to the next option. New event button. We can add an event if we have a calendar set up with our Microsoft account. I'm going to tab again. Get started button set up your calendars to quickly see your events. Hide agenda setup link. Monday, November 9, 2020 link. And it brought us right back around. So as you continue using the tab key in this area, it's going to take you around in a circle again. I'm going to press the escape key to close the calendar. System clock, 2.06 p.m., 11 slash 9 slash 2020 button. System clock, 2.07 p.m., 11 slash 9 slash 2020. Pressing enter on the date and time opens up that mini calendar. Let's see what the context menu has. I'm going to press the application key. Context menu. I'm going to start using the down arrow now that the context menu is open. Toolbar sub menu T. Search sub menu H. Show Cortana button checked O. Show task view button checked V. And these are just general options for the taskbar area in Windows. Show people on the taskbar P. Show Windows Inc. Workspace button W. Show touch keyboard button Y. Cascade Windows unavailable D. Show Windows stacked unavailable E. Show Windows side by side unavailable I. Show the desktop S. Task Manager K. Lock the taskbar checked L. Taskbar settings T. Toolbar sub menu T. And we come back around to the top. To close this context menu, I'm going to press the escape key. System clock. 2.08 p.m., 11 slash 9 slash 2020 button. You may have noticed that the NVDA icon is showing down here. Something else we can do from the system tray is access the NVDA options. On the left arrow until I find the NVDA icon. 
user promoted notification area toolbar, speakers, LH guest internet access, OBS studio is using your microphone button, NVDA button. We found the NVDA button, I'm going to press enter. NVDA menu. And this brings up the NVDA menu. This is the same menu you can access using insert in anytime you're using NVDA. But for some people, this may be easier, knowing they can come down to the system tray and just press enter on the NVDA icon. Preferences submenu P. Tools submenu T. Help submenu H. To close the NVDA menu, I'm going to press the escape key. Desktop list. Recycle bin 1 of 14. That put us on the desktop. I'm going to use Windows B to get back to my system tray. Safely remove hardware and eject media button. And that's how you access the system tray in Windows 10 using the keyboard with a screen reader. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.